What's up, everyone? Matt and Nick back for another Who Are They? Real Review. And today we are talking about the new Idris Elba film, Beast. I am parked, by the way. <laughs> Just should probably mention that from a busy day and still wanting to be involved with the review, uh, I am doing this one from my car, but I am parked and ready to go to talk about Beast. Oh, boy. Uh... For those who don't know, I've started taking this approach. I've talked about this before, but I've started taking this approach where I try not to watch trailers or anything for the movies, except if it's like a major property, because occasionally we will do a uh, a trailer reaction or something like that. So I'm for the smaller stuff, I'm not trying to do trailer reactions. So this is one of those films where I've gone into blind, just because I don't want a trailer kind of setting the tone of where my head is at for how I, how I'm going to feel about this film. And um, I did as well, because of when you told me, like when we were going to see it, I was like, Oh, well, I guess I'm just going to look up a small synopsis and then go from there. Cause I, I didn't yeah. watch the trailer for this either. No, that that's actually, I, was, I, I didn't know it was about a guy uh, defending his family until Nick told me the other night when I'm at his house for a bonfire. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that. I was just going into this completely blind. So interesting. I, I at least have this little tidbit. And overall, I, I want to say this. Idris Elba, the man rarely ever phones it in. This is this film's no exception. He did He did a fantastic job, as did... Charlotte Copley and the two young female leads who play his daughter. Mm -hmm. Daughters. Um, and, you know, other than a few poachers here and there, and one other person playing, like, a helper of the Lions, Matt just named the entire cast. Yeah. Basically. You follow them pretty much the entire time without any interruption. And that, these small little self contained movies are kind of the stuff I, I like. So when I when I got an idea that this is going to be it, I'm like, all right, cool. Um, but the director, Baltazar Cormacu, or Comaker, excuse me, um, the, it's it's a Welsh, like, I can't, I'll, I'm, I'm going to give the movie its flowers first. It's well shot, well acted, and technically just from a technical standpoint a good film however the story is kind of where this fall flat falls flat and i know nick and i were talking about this last night yeah uh the pacing is not the best and they're really okay so everybody likes jaws for its build-up right and this is a movie that I can compare. It's one of those comparative type movies where there's an animal threat and people who are uh, going after the animal and want to, or, or, and, or people, it's more of fish out of water animal type yeah. film, which I will say aren't necessarily my favorite types of films, but here's where it works with Jaws is you're building up to this threat and you barely ever see it and you only see it a little bit, right? This threat is not continuously just appearing to completely shift the pacing of the film over and over and over again. Whereas this lion that is the focal point of the film, and I'll leave it at that because obviously it's very, I mean, listen, I understand that not everybody's watching this review, uh, for spoilers, you know, I didn't even, no offense to the marketing, know that this movie even existed until Matt said that we were going to see it. Honestly, same until I got the invite. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the issue with this type of a film. Whereas I don't really like Jurassic Park or, and I get Jaws. Um, but like this type of a film literally just delivers the threat over and over and over and over again. And, sets up these unrealistic situations where the threat is either thwarted or it's uh, going after a person to a point of how are they still alive? You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, 
they're touching on the uh, the threat changing room. There, and each time it changes things, there's there's a little more dire circumstances added to each situation. But there's a few times you're just like, okay, this should be this should be where it ends, right? Oh, mm-hmm. it's not. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Okay, let's just keep riding with it. And the the ending of the movie here here's the thing is that once you get to a certain point in the film how the movie is realistically going to end makes sense. Yes. Um, for those who will see the movie, you'll probably catch my drift when you're watching it. But it's getting to that point. Um, you know, and it's one of those situations where you probably watch the movie and go, oh, okay, this is how it's going to end. Yeah, I get it now. But at the same time, it's like, it is one of those films that feels like it could end at any point, yet the ending was logical in the sense that of the way that it ended, but getting there is just kind of messy to me. Uh, there is there is a point where in which I felt the beast should have perished, and it's still there. And I'm like, huh? Yeah, yeah. And and it almost makes what happened before not feel justified for that yeah. sense. Um, again, you know, it's one of those situations where the beast attacking these four people. Is the entire film? There is, there is, and occasionally others. Just I mean, lose. and yes, of course, there are other cast members in this movie. But like the the central point of this film is there is a point where the beast is introduced, and from that point forward, the entire film is this long withstanding fight between the beast and mm-hmm. what's going on in the film. So, you know, if it, and Matt had brought this up, if you can withstand a few plot points here and there and can enjoy this movie for what it is, then you'll probably have a good time watching it. But for me personally, it's just not my type of film. Yeah. Uh, I, my point was it's for, we haven't had a real thriller. We, I mean, we had Nope, of course. And then we had black phone early in the summer. But other than that, for those people who are looking for those thriller adrenaline pushes that you get sometimes with the thriller, this this will satisfy your crave. There's a few good jump scares. A few got me. And Nick Nick is laughing about it. But I don't watch a lot not... of like thriller or horror type films with you. So when I do, and I I get it. I, oh, there you go. See, norm, normally thrillers don't get me. This one, I guess. It's the ones where black people put in hyper realistic situations because th- this. Th- let's keep in mind this situation. Somewhat could happen. It, it is a black family that go on to this uh, personal safari on on a reservation one afternoon, and then a, there's a rogue lion. That's something that could possibly happen in real life. Now, this is yeah. like I said. This is a hyper real hyper realistic situation. Because the way that it goes about past that, you're just like, eh, I don't know about that. But for the main point, the, like the main issue of the film, that could happen. And that's why I'm like, oh, I'm very uncomfortable watching this. This is, oh, no, 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 no. Um, yeah. yeah. But I think Nick and I both agreed uh, last night. I kind of still feel with it today. The technical aspect of things is what saves this film in regards to a score. So overall, I think we agreed on a 2.5 out of 5 reels. It just made the most sense. It, it, like there were, there, I don't know how you feel about the technical aspects, but I think completely, because I know we talked about that a little bit. But it's, it's, Here's the me, thing, is that you're never reels. going to be, ever since Sigrid and Freud, you're never going to be able to have an actual lion on set doing the things yes. that it's doing. There's going to be CGI. You have to get past that. And if you can get past that, then everything else from a technical standpoint, South Africa is a fucking beautiful place. Yeah, my friend. It, it is. Cinematography like, it, was great too. Do you, just yeah. even look, just, just... You're just seeing landscapes that are absolutely gorgeous. And, um, uh, and, and like I said, you have to get past the fact 
that it, it's it's like the Revenant effect. You have to get past the fact that why the hell would they ever put anybody in danger of actually fighting a lion? It's a CGI lion. Everybody said that it worked for, uh, you know, Lion King. Not myself, but, like, it, it just depends on what you like. You know what I mean? Well, to, to be fair, the first, when we first see CGI lions up close for a long time, it didn't look great. But the singular beast lion looked it much got better. better. It, it got, it, it's the, first of all, what I will say before we wrap this up is when it comes to CGI like that, and you and I both experience this, is it's the, uh, oh gosh, what is, the Irishman effect. At first, something like that is going to be like, oh God. But then you kind of get used to it a little bit more, and it's not the worst thing in the entire world. Now, obviously, you're still going to have, I mean, it's a little different, obviously, when it comes to animals versus human beings. But I'm just saying, in, in a time frame of a movie, you sort of just get used to what you're seeing. Unless it's Scorpion King bad. So. That's fair. Well, with that, folks, be sure to check out everything we're doing over here on Lot Real Entertainment. Next week, I know we got two reviews for you. And yeah, we'll see you next time. And it's going to be fun coming up. So, That's right. once again, I am Matt. I'm Nick. And this was another Who Are They Real review. Have a good one.